How wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent updates about the most mysterious object in the solar system as of 2025, the by now famous third interstellar comet 3i Atlas. The comet that was officially discovered on July 1st of 2025, and the comet that astronomers have been racing to study, because it's actually going to be almost completely invisible to us for several months, very very soon. And so in the last few weeks, especially in September of 2025, we actually did have a lot of new studies and a lot of new observations, which means that we kind of have to talk about them again, because this comet is once again changing and is doing something nobody expected. But just so that we're clear, still no aliens. Despite the fact that apparently it turned green. And we'll discuss why in a few seconds. And so here, based on the observations from the James Webb and the Very Large Telescope, along with the new observations from the Gemini South Observatory, we now have even better understanding of what's going on here, but some of the initial assumptions about this comet have sort of fundamentally changed, because this is as unusual and as alien as comets can get. And it seems to be unusual both physically and chemically. And so today we're going to focus on some of these new studies, all of which, as always, you can find in the description below, and mostly focus on why this comet is just so different from anything in the solar system, and what sort of explanations we currently have for all of this, and what we know so far. And so let's start with the coma and the activity itself, because that's really where most of the mysteries come from. And so here, just as a reminder, we know this contains a solid icy core, or a nucleus, surrounded by the fuzzy atmosphere known as coma. This is essentially what you see right there, and this is why it's sort of difficult to see the surface, because it's covering everything. And in all comets in the solar system, the comet itself usually forms when the object gets relatively close to the orbit of Jupiter, or approximately 5 to 6 astronomical units away from the Sun. And in general, this involves the process known as sublimation, or essentially the solid particles on the surface, instead of melting, just become gas. But the major mystery about 3i Atlas was its unusual activity that was really unexpected because it actually became active much farther away, with the observations from the Gemini South in August of 2025, confirming that it's still growing and still emitting more and more stuff. Which implied that it seems to possess the chemical makeup and the composition that we most likely have never seen before, because we don't expect things to sublimate so early for any of the comets we have here. And so by August of 2025, Gemini South Telescope captured a visible and very prominent anti-solar tail or tail pointing away from the sun, that was at least 56,000 kilometers in length, definitely confirming that this seems to have classical cometary behavior. But interestingly, during the early August, we also noticed that some of the inner coma appeared to be slightly elongated and pointing toward the sun, so it basically had a kind of an anti-tail. But it was pretty quickly determined to be not a tail at all, and instead a dust plume being emitted preferentially from the sunlit side, where the dramatic heating of ice made it sublimate much more actively, essentially releasing a huge amount of dust toward the direction of the sun instead of away from the sun. And by early September, observations confirmed that the inner coma has now evolved into a fan shape, implying that even compared to comets right here in the solar system, this one here was evolving super quickly. And this constant change and these constant emissions gave scientists enough data to start making assumptions about its composition and the core itself. And while almost right away, based on the detections from the James Webb, it was determined to be a strange comet in terms of actual elements. First of all, it was incredibly enriched in carbon dioxide. Here, the ratio of carbon dioxide to water was approximately 7.6 to 1 much, much higher than anything in the solar system. And because we know carbon dioxide melts at much lower temperatures, this definitively explained why this comet became visible so early on. It essentially started to become a cometary at much farther distances because it was mostly carbon dioxide. Or at least its surface was mostly carbon dioxide based, with only a little bit of water. And this potentially implies that 3i Atlas may have been formed outside its parent star, or perhaps near what's known as the carbon dioxide ice line. It's essentially a line much farther away from the star, where temperatures are usually cold enough for carbon dioxide or dry ice to condensate and to form solid structures, because otherwise there's really no good explanation for why there's so much CO2 on the surface. And here it was also confirmed that the nucleus has a very thick insulating crust, very likely suppressing sublimation of water, and very likely causing water to remain trapped inside which basically implies that it has somewhat bizarre surface structure. But at the same time, the Very Large Telescope in Chile was able to confirm two very specific elements that we usually do find around comets. It detected the cyanogen ions, or ions of cyanide, 
an atomic vapor of nickel. Now, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, detecting nickel in this case is very common. As a matter of fact, a lot of comets out there usually emit nickel, so that by itself does not mean that this is a metallic object. But what is super strange is that we normally also expect the emissions of iron. And so even though in the solar system, in a natural comet, we do see both iron and nickel, here the lack of iron vapor is actually kind of bizarre. Suggesting once again that it seems to have a different formation history from a typical comet in the solar system. With additional observations also revealing that this comet seems to lack a lot of carbon chain compounds. Specifically compounds like C2 or dicarbon. And that's actually kind of important for what we're going to be discussing next, which is its change of color. And so because this was depleted in carbon chain compounds, which we do expect to see around comets, here this suggests that compared to comets in the solar system, 3i atlas was extremely depleted in dicarbon compared to cyanogen atoms. Once again, not something we observe in the solar system, making this super bizarre, at least in terms of chemistry. But now, just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, a team of astrophotographers, Michael Jaeger and Gerald Remen, were able to capture the comet during a lunar eclipse over the skies of Namibia with this incredible and very beautiful picture showing us something that currently does not make a lot of sense. As you can see, the comet seems to be green. Okay, so that's not unusual for comets, but usually this bright emerald green color is actually caused by dicarbons in a typical solar system comet. So basically, if we see green comets, it's because of the dicarbon atoms being ionized by the solar radiation and emitting green light. Yet, as I just mentioned, the chemical observations from just a few weeks ago discovered no bicarbon, establishing that this is a bicarbon poor comet and thus should not be able to produce these colors. And so at least as of today, spectroscopic observations suggest that there is no dicarbon at all. Although here I have to mention something really important that's been circulating on the web and unfortunately has been kind of misrepresented by uh, Avi Loeb that Harvard guy. In one of his recent blog posts on Medium, he essentially tries to explain this color as the emission of cyanide that was confirmed around the comet. And the thing is, well, that's actually kind of incorrect. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe it's very incorrect. I'm actually going to post the link for this older paper from 1994 that specifically talks about this. But for some reason, some articles and some websites, and of course Avi Loeb's post, seem to claim that cyanogen emits green light. However, cyanogen emits mostly violet light at 387 nanometers. As a matter of fact, it's almost ultraviolet emissions. And though it does have some weak emissions at 420 nanometers and the infrared as well, it does not produce any green light at all. And so at the moment, it's actually unclear how all of this started and why so much press picked up on this. But for typical comets, cyanogen does not contribute to the green color, as you can learn from the study in the description. And as a matter of fact, the study is called the Cometary Fluorescent Spectrum of Cyanogen. So like literally the entire study is about the colors. And so the reality right now is that nobody knows why exactly it's green, but that's of course part of the exciting mystery. Because this is such an unusual object and because it's from a completely different star system, we do expect it to emit some really strange things. With the other mystery coming from a slightly different observation in regards to its polarization. With the idea of polarization referring to the light waves wiggling in all directions instead of wiggling in a single direction. And so here based on the Nordic Optical Telescope, the additional observations from the comet revealed that it's characterized by an extremely deep and narrow negative polarization branch. Which is very very strange for comets and asteroids, and even previous comets like 2i Borisov or Comet Oumuamua. And so these negative polarization effects suggest that the dust coma is made from unique mixture of icy and dark materials, with some of the lab experiments showing that a thin frost layer of water ice covering dark surfaces could maybe produce polarization measurements similar to 3i Atlas. Although something somewhat similar has been observed from very far away objects, such as trans-Neptunian objects, like for example objects like Pluto and its moon Charon. And intriguingly, in one of the recent studies about the first interstellar object, Oumuamua, a team of scientists provided enough evidence to suggest that Oumuamua might have been some kind of a Plutoid chunk or a fragment of a Pluto-like object from a different star system because of its very strange characteristics and because of its pure nitrogen ice composition and even its pancake shape. And so it would not be strange that we actually have something very similar here as well, with this object also coming from some kind of a faraway region in a different star system, and possibly also being a chunk of a dwarf planet, 
or some other chunk of ancient ice from an object far away from the star. But one question we still have no answer for is of course, so where exactly did this come from and how old is this? And that's because currently it's impossible to trace where the comet came from, but one of the recent studies that was just published in September used the data from the famous Gaia telescope to try to reconstruct its trajectory and essentially discovered that in the last 4 million years it did not approach any major stars and seems to have traveled completely undisturbed for a very long time. Now beyond 4 million years we don't really know because the trajectories become very uncertain, but this once again confirms that this is very likely a pristine object. But because it's moving so fast and because of its relatively unusual trajectory, it's still assumed to be a really old object, possibly billions of years older than the solar system, but even that is no longer certain. As a matter of fact, at least one recent study does suggest that this is maybe a little bit younger at 3 billion years and not 7 as proposed before. And so in terms of the origin and the age, this is not a question we're going to be answering anytime soon. But apart from the green color discovery, there was also something else that we do see in other comets, but in this case something once again a little bit more extreme. The observations from August and September revealed an unusual shift in the comet's color profile. Initially it appeared to be red, which indicates light reflected from the redder surface, very likely oxidized for billions of years by cosmic ray exposure, but around mid-August of 2025, the color quickly changed and transitioned to something we usually see in the solar system comets. And right now scientists think this is because of a shift from the red particles from the crust that started to be overwhelmed by white grains of ice coming from the surface. So basically here we had separate emissions at different times and mostly because the comet started to warm up with more and more stuff coming from the surface. Okay, we've discussed the composition, the observation of colors and so on, but what's next? Well, there's actually something exciting that's going to be happening in the next few days that a lot of scientists are trying to capture. According to the projections in the late September, this comet is on course to be struck by an extremely powerful coronal mass ejection, or basically a kind of a solar burp that on Earth usually produces the aurora. And this high energy event is expected to provide scientists with very unique insights into what happens to interstellar ices and dust when these bursts of solar wind and radiation start to interact with it. And so they actually want to see what happens to the tail and the coma and how this affects the color change as well. As a matter of fact, because of these interactions, we might actually see some of the stuff that was not seen previously because it's now going to be reacting with all of the solar radiation. And so chances are in the next few weeks we're going to hear more about this comet until it finally disappears behind the sun in October of 2025. But we might also hear back from the Martian missions because around early October they should be able to see this comet as well and might actually collect more data. That's once again because around this time the comet is going to be very close to Mars. And so until November and possibly early December we're not going to hear much about this just because it's going to be behind the sun. But once the comet becomes visible again this is going to be super exciting because we'll get to see how it changed and we'll get to see what's actually hiding behind all of this bizarre ice on the surface. And we'll also get to see some of the thicker layers underneath the crust, assuming of course the comet survives the passage and does not fall apart. And so this is definitely one of the most exciting events in 2025 and a very exciting object to study just because we've never seen anything like it in the solar system. Not only is this different from the solar system comets, it's also different from the two previous extrasolar comets that did not show any of these emissions. And so as astronomers continue to watch this and as they continuously gather more information, we'll just wait and see what happens and we'll definitely come back and discuss this more in one of the future videos very soon. And so until future observations, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, check out previous videos in the description below. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads and can DM me directly or by joining a channel membership that grants you early access. I'll turn where you can also buy the Wonderful Person t-shirt in the description below. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.